prefer to write the domain, so x minus 1 positive, x plus 2 positive, from here x greater than 1, from here greater than negative 2. So what is the common domain or the domain? Greater than 1 indeed. Now I can condense s log base 3 of x minus 1 over x plus 2 equals 2. Once I condense it into one log and a number on the other side, I can change it into an exponential equation. How do I do that? So 3 squared equals this. So I see 9 over 1 equals x minus 1 over x plus 2. It's absolutely a proportion. So I will cross multiply. And we get 9x plus 18 equals x minus 1. Linear. I move x and I move 18. So 8x equals negative 19, and x equals negative 19 over 8. No solutions. It's not a number greater than 1. Questions? Is this clear? Yes? OK. Uh, 26 on page 539. Yes? 26, 539. The function a of t equals 82.3 e to negative point zero zero four t models the population of Germany in millions uh, t years after 2010. What is t for 2010 then? t years after 2010. Yeah. Perfect. Great job. What was the population of Germany in 2010? What do I have to do? That's part A. Plug in. What exactly? So let's do this together. How much is negative 0.004 times 0? Zero. How much is e raised to zero? E raised to zero. One. How much is one times eighty-two point three million? Eighty-two point three million. Well, we know that that this must be the initial population. Part B. Is the population of Germany increasing or decreasing? Let's say I have no idea. I'm going to determine what happens uh, 10 years later. If it's, if it's a number bigger than 82, what should I say about the function? Increasing. If, if I get a of 10 to be f 49, what will you say? Decreasing. So let's plug in 10. So let's double check. So let's put it in. And I have uh, 82.3 times e raised to, and in parentheses, negative 0 0.04 times 10, close the parentheses, and I get 10 years later 55 million. So couldn't you hypothetically say already automatically that's decreasing because yes. it's negative 0 0.04? Exactly. It's an e exponential decay. It's not an exponential growth. Absolutely. So you could have just, that could have been your answer. From the very beginning. From the very beginning, but I wanted to convince everyone. Gotcha. So I said, okay, in 2010 it was this. Let's see 10 years later, in 2020. And it appears to be this, obviously, from 82 million to 55 million, it's a huge decrease. I hope that's not the case. In which year will the population of Germany be 79.1 million? 79.1 equals 82.3. Yes, e to negative 0 0.004 t. What type of equation is it, and what are we doing to determine when?
What do we do? Say it again. Yes, that's we have to set it. Yeah, we have to get it prepped. Seventy-nine point one over eighty-two point three equals e to negative point zero zero four t. And now, only now, I can. Yes, natural log to both sides. Natural log seventy-nine point one over eighty-two point three equals negative point zero zero four t. Remember, I should write times natural log e, but why don't I? Because it's one. Excellent. So then t will be. And we divide both sides. Be very careful with parentheses. Parentheses are on the denominator because it's a negative number. Um, I have natural log. Natural log already pops up with parentheses. 79.1 divided by 82.3 and divided by in parentheses negative 0 0.004. Close the parentheses and press enter. So it's 9.9, .9, I would say approximately 10 years, which is 2010. I didn't know, I just picked 10 years later, as you see. So it's roughly 10 years later when the population drops. So sorry, this is. So when we plugged in 10. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. So, so uh, I, we have to go back. I have to go back and check my answer, my numbers. So, oh, <laughs> I missed one digit. See, that's why if I manage to teach my students in any of my classes to say this makes no sense, I reached my target, at least one of my targets. I said, okay, so 10 years I have 79.1, something is wrong, right? So we have to go back, I have to go back and change this. I missed a zero. I didn't miss it here, but I missed it here. So 82.3 times E. It's I, uh, no excuse, but the software is very uh, fidgety. So sorry about that, my mistake, my apologies, which makes sense. So I have to go back and check my uh, change my answer here. It was 79.07. So this is O and this is 79. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, what about um, what about, so we looked at the word problem, we looked at um, log equations, we looked at graphs of exponentials of log. Um, I can't think of anything else from this chapter. Say it again. Yes, yes. So I was just trying to finish up chapter four. Anything else you can think of? Condensing, expanding, a word problem, um, radioactive decay, you can look at a problem. Um, log equations, exponential equations, domain of log function, which we know. Anything else from chapter four? I, we are going to review again on Wednesday. But anything pops up right now from chapter four before we look at matrices? Say it again. Yes, please do. Please do. Yes. Okay. Very good. So uh, we want to look at. Uh, so this is. Um, we we are skipping chapter five because we want to look at an uh, application with um, Gauss-Jordan. And then we'll come back to 5 and then chapter 8. So uh, we're looking at 6, chapter 6. For Gauss-Jordan. Okay, on page, this is only 6.1. 
your way, you can build one where you're going to have like dice or jewelry with the fractions. Or can you not figure that out by looking at it? I, no, I won't be able okay. to tell. I wish I could. No. I'll try to find one for, for um, yeah. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Please do. So let's look at problem three on page 687. And we have x plus 2y plus 3z equals negative 5. And we have 2x plus y plus z equals 1. And then x plus y minus z equals 8. OK. Would you like to get it started? You would like me to get it started? You. So you want to work on it for a minute, or you want me to start with you? It's up to you. Yes, we have to write the augmented matrix. This is our first step. Indeed, 1, 2, 3, negative 5, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 8. These two? Yeah. There is no point because all I'm interested is in this. And these have to become zeros. If you swap them or not, they still have to become zero. So we accomplished this already. So we, we will be using row 1 and multiply by something and add it to row 2. And row 1 multiply by something and add it to row 3. Yes, indeed. So in, in order, negative 2 and negative 1. Perfect. Which row do we copy now? Because we know if we use it once we use, while we are using it, it cannot change. Right. So one, two, three, and negative five. So we multiply together. One times negative two plus two. Two times negative two plus one. 3 times negative 2, negative 6 plus 1. Negative 5 times negative 2, plus 1. The second rule is super ugly. It is what it is. 1 times negative 1 plus 1. 2 times negative 1 plus 1. Nice. 3 times negative 1 minus 1. 5 times negative 1 plus 8. Do we agree with these numbers? Now, yes, I can do this. I cannot swap with the first row. That's carved in stone for now. Now I can do this instead of dividing everything by 3. I can do this and multiply by negative 1. So row 2 becomes row 3, and row 3 becomes row 1, uh, row 2. Yes, yes, because I don't want to use a fraction if I can avoid it, but sometimes you can't avoid it. So 1, 2, 3 negative 5, 0, 1, 4, negative 13, and 0, negative 3, negative 5, 11. So I also multiplied row 3 by negative 1 in the process. So, be, so I could say row 2 if you'd like, because at first I changed them, I swapped them, and then I multiplied by negative 1. So the key basically to do these is try to be able to do at least two different uh, two different processes at a time. Save time. Yes, because otherwise it will take like, like forever. four pages. Mm -hmm. The book does not show it like that. They do one step at a time. But if I'm multiplying row one, why don't I do it in one step? Correct. Yeah. If I multiply row two, I'll do it in one step. If mm -hmm. I multiply row three, I'll do both in one step. As long as you don't get confused with like Right, 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 right. Exactly. OK, so all this is done. And now I want to multiply row 2 by something to add it to row 1, and row 2 by something to add it to row 3. 
Yes, negative 2 and 3. Which row I copy now because you will not change. Yes, 0, 1, 4, and negative 13. And of course, this cannot change. If, if somehow I change this, it means that I am not using the correct sequence of steps. Okay. And I'm going backwards and I will not solve. Okay. Okay. Yes, Mark? Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, what if I have uh, negative 2? Uh, 1 times negative 2 plus 2. 8 times negative 2. I'm sorry. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 3, negative 5. Negative 13 times negative 2 is 26. 26 minus 5, 21. 1 times 3 minus 3. 4 times 3 is 12, minus 5, 7. And negative 39 plus 11, negative 28. Now you're an expert and you remember what you told me two weeks ago? My head is spinning. <laughs> yeah. And you're an expert now. Wonderful. Well, the first example, the second example, they're not easy. First of all, it took me 40 minutes to, to explain the first example. I, I fully understand why it can get confusing. Okay, we're on, on the right track because I need a 1 in here, so I will divide row 3 by 7. 0, 0, 1, negative 4. 1, 0, 0, 1, and 4, negative 5, negative 13, 21. This is the very final step in which I multiply row 3. So for, uh, for row 1, we need 5. And for row 2, we need negative 4. Okay, which row do I copy now? Three. Yes. So let's do this together. 1 times 5 minus 5. Negative 4 times 5 is negative 20 plus 21, 1. 1 times negative 4 plus 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16 minus 13, 3. I don't know. It could be, but I have no idea. So I will have to go back and check. Back to the original problem. 1, 3, negative 4. 1, 3, negative 4. 1, 3, negative 4. 1, 3, negative 4. Ready? 1 plus 6 is 7. Negative 12 plus 7 is negative 5. 2 plus 3 is 5. Minus 4 is 1. Yes. 1 plus 3 is 4. Plus 4 is 8. Now I'll say yes. We don't have to do this, but I would like to show you um, how to check the answer if you'd like. Sure. We have to create two matrices though. Is this the one the matrices? No. Okay. Okay. It's the inverse okay. matrix. No, it's the inverse matrix. So in um, second end matrix, we are going to edit. So I'm going to edit a three by three matrix which is the matrix of the system, not the augmented matrix. So I copy just the matrix of the system on rows. One, two, three. One, enter, two, enter, three, enter. And then two, enter, one, enter, one, enter. And then one, one, negative one. One, one, negative one. OK? Get out of there with second and quit after you finish. Second and quit. Go back into matrices. Second and matrix again from scratch. We are going to edit. 
but this time not matrix A, but matrix B. So go all the way to the right to edit and to the next matrix, matrix B. But this one is a 3 by 1, because it's the part, the augmented part, 3 by 1. And now you enter the three terms, negative 5, 1, 8, negative 5, enter, 1, enter, 8, enter. This is a totally different method, but just it's worth working on it because you can always check. So now we do this, second in matrix, call matrix A, you must put power negative 1 on it, and you multiply by matrix B, second in matrix, and copy matrix B. Once you have the screen, when you click enter, you're going to get a column matrix with answers 1, 3, and negative 4. It's a different method. It's called the inverse matrix. If we don't put negative 1, we're not going to get the correct answer. There is a big theory behind it. So uh, my department chose to show either Gauss and Elimination or Gauss Jordan, not the inverse matrix. So, but it's very easy to check. You can always check your answer with, like this, method, with this method. Can you show me again how when you started on the screen, the stuff on the screen? Because I got the matrix, the, the, the matrix B where you change it from three to So you have the matrix B? Yes. You have matrix A and B? Yes. Okay, so now uh, you just call the matrix. So second in matrix, you call matrix A, it's already highlighted, call it. Put power negative 1, put the multiplication symbol, and go back to second in matrix, and this time you call matrix B. And when you press enter, you get x equals 1, y equals 3, and um, z equals negative 6. Negative 4. You know what I meant. <laughs> In moving forward, negative 4 and negative 6 are the same. <laughs> no, of course not. Thank you. Okay. Any questions about uh, Gauss-Jordan? Okay, so let's go back a little bit to uh, more sequences. And let's look at uh, a few questions there. So from page, I'm looking at the review of chapter 8. A dub 1. Uh, let's look at problem 5 on page 827. Given um, a1 equals 9 and an, the general term, as 2 over 3 times a n minus first for n greater than or equal to 2. We're asked to find the first four terms of the sequence. So obviously, this is not the general term, if you want, the pure general term is given as a recursive formula. So in other words, uh, term 100 depends on 100 minus 1, which is term 99. And I cannot determine, if you ask me to find uh, A100, I have to determine A2, A3, A4, blah, 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 A99, and then I'll give you A100. Exactly. So any term depends on the previous one. So we're asked to find four, the first four terms. So that's not a problem because I already have a1, which is 9. So now how do I write a2? 2 divided by 3 times, times 9. So this is 2 over 27. Now a3. Yes, 2 over 3 times 2 over 27. Of course, I will simplify first and then flip. 
2 over 1 times 9 over 2, and I get 9. Nice. And A3, I'm sorry, you know what I meant. 3 is 4 now, moving forward. Or 4 is 3. So I have 2 over 3 times 9, which is 2 over 27. Very nice. Say it again. I said I'm feeling I would do something wrong if I got that answer. <laughs> oh, nope. Um, find each indicated sum and then s use the summation notation for the other, uh, next problem. Ready? Um, so let's say we want to find the uh, sum from i equals 1 through 5 from 2i squared minus 3. How many terms does this have? 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's write the first one and the last one and then use the calculator. Or we can find all of them by hand. It's up to you. By hand. So plug in 1 and tell me what to write. Do not calculate. I want everyone to see those five terms. So 2 times 1 squared minus 3, 2 times squared minus 3, 2 times 2 times, and 2 times, that's it. And now all you have to do is just perform these operations. So 2 minus 3, this will be negative 1. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 3, in order of operations, right? Plus 5, plus. 3 squared is 9. 2 times 9 is 18. And 18 minus 3, 15, plus. 8 times 2, 16 minus, uh, I'm sorry, 16 times 2, sorry. 16 times 2 is 32. 32 uh, minus 3 is 29. Okay, and finally, 25 times 2 is 50, minus 3 is 47. So this is 20 minus 1 is 19. And when I add these two, I get uh, 76. And then when I add these two, I get 95. So now with the calculator, I have uh, math up to 0. Um, I have from x equals 1. 2, 5, and now in parentheses we have, I hope I don't need second parentheses, uh, so x squared, and another set of parentheses I meant, I hope there is no need, and when I press enter, if I don't get 95, I know I have to go back to make the necessary changes. Okay, so uh, now let's say we want to uh, change this. Using or condensing into uh, an expression with a summation notation. So, top would be 13. Top would be 13 if that's how, we, how you want it, yes, that's fine. Let's say i equals. Okay, very good. That's it. Awesome. When i is 4, I get this. Plus, when i is 5, I get this. Plus, 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 plus. When i is 13, I get that. Excellent. Okay, um, we have another six minutes. Should we look at um, some systems? Yes? So, back to chapter 5. Equations, inequalities, what would you prefer? Equations, very good. There it is. Uh, let's look at problem three on page 613. And we have 5x plus 3y equals 1 and 3x plus 4y equals negative 6.
I have no choice here, I would say. But eliminate, yes. Now all we have to decide which one. It doesn't matter. I still have to multiply. You want to eliminate y. Very good. So then what? Excellent. So, negative 20x minus 12y equals negative 4. 9x plus 12y equals negative 18. This is what we do in Gauss Jordan, but we don't show it like this. We show the intermediate step. In Gauss Jordan, we don't show the intermediate step. Okay, so this is negative. 11x equals negative 22. Nice. x equals 2. Now we have to go back. It doesn't matter where. So let's say we go back here. So we have 6 plus 4y equals negative 6. So 4y equals negative 12. So y equals negative 3. Do not trust it. It's very easy to make an error, right? So I go back to the original problem with 2, negative 3, and I check. 2, negative 3, 2, negative 3. 10 minus 9, 10 minus 9 is 1. 6 minus 12 is negative 6. So I will say yes. Uh, what about a uh, nonlinear system? I don't know why I shut the book. Right? Sorry about that. So, um, okay, page five eighty seven. Uh, let's look at twenty eight. x squared minus 2y equals 8, and x squared plus y squared equals 16. Can I use elimination? Can I use substitution? Yes. But if I use elimination, I can only el eliminate x because they are the same variables. But here I cannot eliminate y. If you want to, um, you can use substitution. But let's multiply which equation by what to eliminate x squared? The first by negative 1, I agree. So negative x squared plus 2y equals negative 8, and x squared plus y squared equals 16. According to plan, that goes away. And now the new equation is y squared plus 2y, you can, cannot combine them, equals 8. So therefore, y squared plus 2y minus 8 equals 0. I'm hoping for something quick that it's easy to factor. Yes, 4 and 2. So y plus 4, y minus 2. So we get y equals negative 4 and y equals 2. But that's not good enough because I have to find the corresponding x. So what uh, y equals negative 4. I have to go back here. So x squared uh, with minus 4 will be positive 8 equals 8. Nice. And let's see what happens with 2. 4 minus 2y equals 8. Or negative 2y equals 4. Or y equals negative 2. So it appear, appears that whatever these are, they cross in two points. One point is uh, two comma negative two comma. Uh -huh. What did I do? Ah. Uh, so what did I do? Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. So I'm telling you, don't trust me today. So minus four equals 8. So x squared equals 12. Really? It's possible. I mean, I'm not saying 
a yay or nay. So when a y is two, yeah, it's four. Yep, it is eight. And uh, then x will be plus or minus two, the square of three. So minus two, the square root of three, and positive two, the square root of three, with y being negative two. No, with y being positive two. That's what it is. So disregard that. Sorry about that. So then make, don't make the errors, don't change the variables like I just did. You can always go.